Now let's take a look at how you can update this data using this update button. So when you open your update form and click on this update button, I want to update these values. So let's suppose if I click on this inactive and click on this update button, I want to update this status. So to update the record, let me just close all these files. And as you know, inside this table, you have this update button, this one. When you click on this update button, it's going to call the update form. And inside this update form, you have all the values of your database. I want to get the database values as well as the user input values and then return to the React mutation. So we can store that or you can say, so we can update that value in the database. Open my application, open the console, reload the browser. And now when I click on this update button, I'm not going to have anything. This is because now this form data is going to return nothing because we haven't changed anything inside the form. Let's suppose I change the salary. If I specify here 15000 and click on this update button, I'm going to get only the salary property inside this object. What I want, I want to combine these values as well as this property and then return and update the backend. We need to first combine this first name and last name and specify that to the name variable. And also we need to get the form data. So let me first get rid of both this statement. And here I'm going to say, let username is equal to, and inside the template string, here I'm going to pass dollar curly braces, and then I'm going to pass here form data, this variable dot first name. If we have value inside this form data dot first name, then return that. Otherwise return this first name variable this one. So we pass here question mark and specify here first name. I'm going to do the same for this last name. So here I'm going to pass space and pass here dollar curly braces form data dot last name. If we have value inside it, then return that. Otherwise, if we have undefined here, then return this last name value. So now inside this username variable, we have first name and last name. Just out of that, we need to combine this username this form data as well as this backend data and create a new object. So we can return that object to the backend and update the values. So right down here, I'm going to say let updated is equal to object dot assign. Using this assign method, we create a new object and combine multiple objects. So here I'm going to create a new object. So we pass here empty object and then pass data as a second parameter. Now inside this data, as you know, we have all the values of the database. Just after that, we combine form data. If we have the same property in both this object, then the assign method is going to override both value with this second property value. So let's suppose to this data object, we have name property. And if it is equal to admin, and if inside the form data, we have the same property name with the value client, then this assign method is going to override this value with this form data value, something like this. So just out of that, I'm going to specify here a comma, pass an object. We need to pass this username as well. So here I'm going to pass name property and pass this username, this one. Now, if I console.log this update, if I say here console.log updated, reload the browser, click on this update button, click on this update, you can see I'm going to have all the values as a response. If I click on this active button now and click on this update, you can see I'm going to have here active. So this will return the updated values as a response. Now what I want, I want to store these values inside a database. So what we need to do is we need to use react query mutation to update the backend data. So at the top right up here, here I'm going to say use mutation. So right inside this use query here, I'm going to say use mutation as you know using use mutation you can post delete and update data of the backend so right down here i'm going to say constant update mutation is equal to use mutation and inside this you call a callback function and then you specify your update user helper function if you open the lib helper file then you can notice here you have the update user function i'm using this function and pass that to this mutation. So at the top, we need to say comma and pass here update user. And then I'm going to pass that right here. And then to this update user, as you know, we need to pass values. So the first parameter is going to be the user ID. 
and the second parameter is going to be the form data so i'm going to pass this form id right here and as a second argument we pass form data we get this form data from this parameter so here i'm going to say new data and then pass this parameter right here when i call the mutate function of this update mutation i'm going to pass this value i'm going to pass here comma and pass the second argument inside this object and here in the second argument we specify on success function so this is going to be the async function with data and inside this on success i'm simply going to say console.log data updated and just out of that when you click on this handle submit right here i'm going to call await now because this is not the async function we need to pass here async we specify update mutation dot mutate and here we need to call this update value so this value is going to pass to this new data and then pass to this update user now what i want i want to change this active status click on this update button click on this inactive and click on the update button you can see i'm going to get here a response data updated and this object is going to return the status inactive but inside this table you won't get any result this is because we didn't inform react query to update the table when i click on this update button but when i reload the browser you can see that this third data is updated so what i'm going to do is instead of this console.log i'm going to inform the react query that using this on success update the table so at the top here i'm going to say use query client and then at the top i'm going to say constant query client is equal to use query client i'm going to create an instance of query client and then here i'm going to say query client dot set query data and inside this parenthesis we first specify the key which is users and then i'm going to pass your comma and then pass your callback function and inside this callback function you can get the old value so you can pass your old and inside this parenthesis right here you get the updated value so i'm just going to return that updated value instead of returning the old value back to the project i'm going to click on this update button and click on this active button now when i click on this update you can see i'm going to get the record which is updated and you will get the status inactive now if you want to get all the data when you click on this on success you can comment this statement and here you can call query client dot prefetch query and here you need to pass users the tag name and get users you can see i'm not calling this get user function this is only going to call a single user but using this get users i can call the area of object back to the project reload it click on this update button and now when i click on this inactive and when i click on this update you can see i'm going to have inactive as a response if i change this to active click on update it's going to change the value now let's suppose i want to change this salary of this first person click on this update form specify salary which is going to be eighteen thousand. click on update button you can see now the salary is eighteen thousand. now you can update any value of your form by clicking on this update button 